Yes. Okay. Uh, I'd like to call this uh, meeting of November 8th, 2021 with the Planning Commission together. And uh, I want to take the roll call of the Planning Commission members first. Um, uh, Chairman Lind is not here. Tritz is here. Dalman, not here. Yep, I'm here. Oh, you are? Oh, I'm here. Yep, oh. I'm sorry. I'm just having to call in, so. Okay, good. Okay. Um, uh, Bryce, you're here. Here. And uh, Lopi, you are here. Here. Okay, good. And uh, the roll call of the county commissioners, Sarah Mudge. Hi, present. Kayla Marcella. Here. Jeff Fiedler. Here. Oh, good. Okay, can we have an approval of the October 25th, 2021 minutes? Who will um, need a motion to approve them? I move to approve the October 25th, 2021 meeting notes. I, I, there, are, there aren't any. <laughs> I only just got the recording um, last week. <clears throat> that, was that, that was our joint meeting. Yeah. Um, yeah, so no, there aren't any no. there aren't any minutes yet. All right. Uh, um, do you have any changes or additions to the agenda from anyone? Look, looks like not. Okay, let's go into new business. We're ready for you now, Paul. Uh, well, got no new business. And um, I, I, you know, it might be time for Ann and I to do staff updates. <clears throat> um, Ann, would you like to start with that? Um, sure. Um, I think that um, probably everyone is aware that we've been awarded the planning grant. And so um, that will be being funded in January. Um, I just today sent out a housing update uh, to everyone um, just to kind of try to put it all together, all the co cohesive pieces of um, the current action and um, all the different facets of, of uh, the housing solutions that are underway. Um, so I provided that. Um, other things that we have on uh, the horizon. Um, right now, we're seeing, uh, as always, a lot of block consolidations. Um, we have been um, conducting just some preliminary discussions with different potential land use applications, but I don't think that we have um, too much um, on the forefront, which we've got this nice little gap in here to get that country done without um, a bunch of pending applications. So I think that uh, after the first of the year, I do anticipate that we'll hear back from Angelview and there's um, a potential of some other uh, PUB applications in the works. Um, I see Christy is here. Um, Christy, would, would you like to give us an update? Hey, Paul, thanks for the opportunity. I just was tuning in to listen. Um, one thing that you guys might wanna know is that the city got some technical assistance for the Lura parcel, which is uh, six tenths of an acre in phase one rail yards. Um, so some consultants are going to help them move through visioning and um, help put together an RFQ to get a developer for that. Um, and then you guys all probably saw that 2A was approved. So yay, um, we have our first official funding mechanism for housing. So that's great. Really excited to see um, the work on the planning grant and happy to plug in however you guys need. Uh, I might mention um, that Anne sent earlier today sent you a sent a synopsis of the status of um, housing update, uh, which I thought was um, very detailed and very informative. And I say thank you, Ann. Um, but please have a look at that. Um, that is, um, it brings us very much up to date as to where we are with the housing uh, and 
things are happening. And then I also wanted to um, indicate that we have four applicants for our vacancies on the planning commission. Um, and I don't know uh, uh, if, if any of the commissioners have had a chance to review this yet and give instructions to staff as to what you'd like to do. If you haven't, just say so. Paul, can you also, or I just want to remind the planning commissioners who are terming out to also supply a support letter or a letter of interest um, to continue and, and add to the applicant pool? Yes. Do you guys know who you are? Howard, I think you're one of them. And Heather, I think is one of them. Is that right, Sarah? That's what I, that's what my records say. Okay. <clears throat> so a note from both of you, um, send it to me and I can forward it on to the board uh, or you can send it straight to the board if you like. Uh, just a note that you'd like to continue in your position as a regular member. Um, and um, I think that's all that are coming up. Is that right, Sarah? Um, sorry, what do you mean that's all that the two the two positions? Yeah. Uh well yeah. I think and then there's Aaron, right? We have Aaron's position and then we have a vacancy for um a uh uh alternate. So there's a few, yeah. And so and Paul, just to clarify your question to the commission commissioners, are you talking to the planning commissioners or the board of commissioners? No, the board of commissioners. I you know, I, oh. I, I, I don't know what you'd like us to do from this point forward. I, can, I just, can I just chime in here, Sarah, because in the historical data that we have, Paul and, um, I'm sorry, Heather and Howard's terms were changed on the 2021 resolution. And I don't see where their terms were reduced. So, so sure. it's Howard and Heather whose terms expire in December. Okay, because I in this um, email I have from Anne, um, in 2021, um, new dates were um, furnished for the resolution instead of the previous dates. And Howard and Heather's terms were reduced in those dates inadvertently. So I'm not entirely sure that they're up for, um, their terms are up. The, the dates supplied by staff did not align with the prior resolution terms and dates. And so they were, I corrected those dates for those positions and the terms, but we can certainly look back through the annual yeah, resolution. I have, um, in this email from Ann, it, I have resolutions all the way back to 2015. Well, this sounds to me like something that, um, needs needs addressing um and perhaps the board and staff can the the board of county commissioners and staff should should do what we can to address this apparent discrepancy is that um acceptable yeah, yeah i think so um sarah do you want me to send this to you sure have you yep I mean, I have all the I have all the resolutions that we've passed. So, if you want to highlight what, where, what terms you think those should be at, that would be helpful as well. Yeah, I I don't I honestly I don't know because I don't know in previous um, in previous settings what the board had decided on because like, for example, in the 2015 resolution, Heather's term ended in 2018. And then in the 2018 resolution, Heather's term ended in 2020. So I, I'm not entirely sure what happened, but I think you might, we might have to go back through commissioner meeting minutes. Um, let's, let's discuss this amongst staff and the board. Um, 
because yeah, I, I don't think we're going to solve this today. Um, sorry, um, I I took over the meeting. I didn't mean to do that. Well, I just I just wanted to. Um, I I've gotten a text from Heather. She's traveling. She's trying to get to an area that she can have service to get on to the meeting. Um, and so I think that we could go ahead and get into, uh, well, um, if you would like to, uh, Howard, if you would like to get into old business and just start with the website review. I think that's proper. Let's uh, get with that, please. Great. So, so like I mentioned, um, John, I have uh, opened it up so you should be able to screen share. Um, John has been working to prepare the web page. And um, so I asked him to join us tonight just to give everybody kind of a, a first glance of what that looks like. And we've done, um, I believe he's added the questions that model uh, the same questions from the flyer, but we will um, definitely um, be wanting to hear back from everyone. If you have other questions that you think would be um, appropriate to add, but we just kind of wanted to give everyone kind of a, a first look at what that is is looking like. Um, John, are you able to? Uh, yep. get I sh should be able to screen share. Um, just one second. All right, so um, currently this is an unpublished, everyone, can everyone see it? Am I, Looks sorry, great. I'm using a new laptop so I'm making sure everything's working right. Um, this is currently an unpublished web, it's a page, we call, we call it a free form document is technically what it's created. It's housed within the building and land use department currently. That could be changed. There's different options, but this seemed like the natural place for it to be. Um, this is sort of a draft, so a lot of things could be changed. I think Ann mentioned this, we're looking for, in, we're open to input. Um, first things first, where this would show up is on the left side over here, because this is done alphabetically, it'll be right above planning commission. Um, and it won't have its own menu. Like I said, it's a part of building and land use, it'll be much like this. We currently have three sections basically within this page. We start with the description of zoning because it seemed like the most direct way to let people know what that country is about, uh, to basically give them the summary of what it is. We then move on to a um, zoning map, which we have, Bryce was able to supply a link. And when you open it, it opens to the same land use and planning map that you would get from our main page. But what's nice about it is that the backcountry areas are already selected as a layer. So the people who are interested in where backcountry zoning is already have access to that information from the FAQ or whatever we would like to call this page. Um, this seemed very handy because we do get a lot of questions, even with the little that people have heard about backcountry, we get a lot of questions about where it is. Um, and I say that as, I guess, staff. Um, but back to our page, we have the zoning map, and then we have the FAQ se section, um, part of which you can see here is nicely formatted and has the same questions that you guys had on the proposed FAQ mailer that was already in existence. I'll admit I just sort of scammed that and put it right in here. We have a few questions that are already uh, sort of written here. These can be removed, we can change them, we can add more, have less. Um, I'll, I'm gonna talk a little bit more and then we can sort of discuss those questions and maybe why I put them in there. Um, one of the nice things we can do from this web page is when we have a question, what we can do is we can link to the existing code section much like you would in a, say like a scholarly document that has citations at the back. So if someone wonders where you're getting some answer, we could cite code sections. There's also different ways, depending on what we're looking for in utility from this, um, this page. Much like the sheriffs have, we can create a separate menu dropdown over here 
and you can break things out differently. That is an option. It, it's something I could work with a meet on. It depends on what we are looking for uh, in functionality. So those are sort of what we've got in terms of the physical web page. Um, then we have some of the FAQs that are here. You guys are welcome to read those. I won't scroll my mouse over them too much. Um, if you'd like, I can go through why I put them on there. I'm not sure what we're fishing for here, so. That's great, um, John. I think tonight we were just kind of hope, I was kind of hoping that we could just kind of get an idea of what this resource looks like yep. and then um, let everyone, you know, kind of at their leisure go through those and um, let Paul or I know if, if there's additional ones, if, if you would like any of these answers to any of these questions or to discuss them, um, you know, just any follow-up this might create, if anybody can just kind of weigh back in with us um, and certainly take any questions or uh, comments now that anybody might have in regards to this as we're in the middle of creation it, uh, creating it. Yeah, I know I kind of sped through that. Sorry, I kind of threw this presentation together in the last little bit. Um, currently, this, depending on what access you have to our website, this is not viewable. But what I could do is create, um, I can work with a meet tomorrow and make it one that would be ex probably accessible to the Planning Commission and VOCC if that's what we're looking for. That would be great. I think that that would be um, really useful and everybody can kind of digest it because there's a lot of information on it. And um, we're also talking about um, incorporating something right to the very main page um, where we kind of put pending um, information, you know, that's that's uh, kind of critical item items. And I, so John, I know you've been um, considering that to other pages outside of land use that we might want to utilize on the county site um, and particularly probably the county homepage. Yeah, so this would be a document that would be um, linkable from any other part of our, actually be from a lot of websites, but also um, would be able to be created as what's sort of called a news and news and events within the, the website manager that we use. And as you mentioned, would be able to be included in the homepage for the county, so. Do we plan to have a link to the actual um, zoning language? Um, I wondered about that. I wasn't sure what we were looking to include. Um, so in the, what I meant by, and I, I admit I went through kind of quick, um, we could add different sections. So say if we want at the very end just to have all of the proposed document changes or new zoning sections, those are options that are linkable that we can include as images. There's different options available depending on what we're looking to create. Um, I suppose I was looking at this as a launch pad. I wasn't sure what all we wanted to include. I think it's a great launch pad, um, but I would like to see that we actually have a link to the language as it currently exists. Yep, I can definitely get that included. Right, right. Um, it, I think we just need to point out that, um, yes, it, you know, it'll be, uh, I think this is a good lead in to review of the legal review of the language. Um, but yeah, something like the use table to just be able to let the public better understand what allowable uses exist and, um, you know, what really has changed. And then the use specific standards and um, the licensing uh, process and um, which, as we get into the legal review, we'll be sharing with you has been changed into back to permits. Um, uh, as a reference and not as a license reference. But um, yeah, I think all of those links would be really helpful. Does anyone else, the board or the planning commission have any comment on this resource? And so far, knowing that, you know, of course we'll be able to uh, take all of your input and incorporate it um, into any section. You said this corresponds what we've had in the past um, doesn't compare. I mean, I thought this is a tremendous job and I congratulate you all for what you've done on this. It's uh, good to see us going forward like that. And right now it looks really good to me. 
Thank you, Howard. Bryce, did you have? You, you said this corresponds to the flyer that's going out as well? Um, yes, yeah, so some of the questions, these uh, first four are what you included or what were included on what I could see on that document. Um, another thing we sort of floated was having on here a link to, the, to that document so that if say someone loses their mailer um, or if they were wondering, well, what did you send out to people? That could be included as a as a link on here as well. Um, but this, I sort of just took the questions you had. There was also a what will this and what won't this that you had on there as well that I didn't include on here. If you are looking for that, it can easily be incorporated as well. Um, so there's that utility is there if we'd like to include it. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, I think that that flyer should probably be fairly prominent on the website as, as well. That, sure. that links us back to this page that you pulled together, John, and also um, the, the language as it's currently being proposed. And when are you thinking that we're going to be looking to schedule a hearing on this? Um, we have tentatively said January 10th. Okay. Um, with the, um, yeah, I'd like to just kind of do a recap of the calendar after we um, just review this and answer. Okay. Everybody feels pretty good about where we're at currently in uh, the design of the website. Please send us your thoughts and um, we will be working on with John um, access for everyone to take a deeper dive into it. And please, um, this next week will be really critical to give us any more thoughts. Of course, as, as we go, we can edit um, if we need to, but um, we are trying to look at having all of our publishing pieces by next week. So we will get you out of access to this and please make time this week to give us your feedback so that we can make sure that we've got everything um, together. And it looks like Heather is with us now. Hi, Heather. Hey, I'm still pretty spotty and I'm really sorry. So I might have you continue however you've been doing this and I'll make sure I'm listening in and stuff. Great, that, that sounds great. We uh, just went through the website um, uh, that John has been working on our team as, as part of our resource. And so he's going to email out everyone um, access to this. And then if any, everybody can get their feedback back to us this week, that would be great. Um, I think that moving on, I think we'll go into the legal review. Um, thank you so much, Chris, for uh, getting this to us. Um, give me just a minute. Can I can I add one more comment? Yes, yes, please. I just on some of these. I think this is this looks really great, and I also would just um, ask maybe that we highlight like bullet some of the. I know you. I saw the those like short little narratives of the purpose, um, and maybe we bold put in bold some of those like that primitive experience or this or that through those so that people don't just glaze over the. Um, the narrative there and then at the bottom those FAQ questions some of them we should really be sure to talk through before we get to hearing that we know we all know what those answers might be like can I read my, zone my property out of that country um I mean that's a great question <laughs> And I, I, I think that the, I don't think that it's easy because those parcels then would be surrounded and you'd have to have a contiguous, like you'd have to be contiguous with the adjacent zoning. Um, so I think that's an easy answer, but I'd love to, for us to like talk through those kinds of responses um, and maybe think about like, um, where was the other one? Um, there was a question about a road. Oh yeah, can I create my own seasonal road on my property? Um, and let's like link right to like, perhaps like the road list or be sure to mention the road list map on 
the site and or layer and then the permitting through Forest Service which I think obviously would be a part of that kind of response or that answer to that question, but, um, or do I need to, maybe the question is, do I need to permit with any other agent entities other than the county? And maybe the road thing is like layered in there somehow. Yeah, so, and I mean, these, like I said, these are all editable and sort of, would yeah. be, I'll admit workshop by myself and Marla, who I sit next to sort of just brainstorming both what we get calls on already yeah. And as you guys know, I'm relatively new here and I can picture what a lot of people that I know in Denver or I know coming out of the front range or people that see this opportunity um, might be asking when they Definitely. hear about backcountry. So I think, I think what we will be doing, um, you know, the answers to these questions and these questions you know, uh, we're just brought forward today. <laughs> so um, what we're gonna do is we will pose um, some answers to these. So um, that link to those um, to make sure that we're all consistent with what, how we answer these um, is, is definitely critical because these are, these are some new questions like John said that he and Marla um, provided to me today. Um, and so we'll get some, um, answers to these as well as some resources and make sure that everyone is aware when we have those out for discussion. So um, that will, we'll, we'll get that queued up because I know that that's really essential to, um, you know, all of these are, these are big questions. And so we want to go ahead and, and provide everyone with what we anticipate the answers are and then make sure that everyone feels good about those answers. Does that sound good? Okay. Um, so then I'm just going to give me one moment here and let me get the legal review. And I would like to move into that unless there's any objections. Uh, I don't object, but I'm gonna say goodbye to everyone. I do have to run to another appointment. Um, I will hopefully have these links so that everyone can review this page out to you tomorrow or the next day. And um, thank you for letting me present. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Okay, let's get Sorry, it's taking just a minute to open here. I apologize. Okay, there we go. Okay, can everyone see that okay? Is yes, okay. we see that. Okay, great. Um, so Chris is on here too. So Chris, at any point, please feel free to jump in and um, uh, if, if you'd like to add in comments. So please feel free to do that. Um, as we start this document, um, some of these items are um, grammatical corrections or um, other items. So the first one that Chris brought up to us uh, was that the remnants of historic mining activity was po potentially contradicting existing industrial mining as being not eligible for rezoning. And so, um, as you will see in this reply, uh, we just kind of talked about that um, mining claims are not inclusive of the IM zone district. Um, and in fact, um, a lot of the new areas that we're looking to rezone do have, you know, what that term that we refer to as recreational mining claims. And so, um, she helped us make this more consistent with the language and change the two remnants of historic mining activity um, so that we're not having any contradiction 
and the very last um, sentence within here of what is eligible for um, the very last sentence right here where it says existing industrial mining zone parcels shall not be eligible for inclusion within the backcountry zone district. And so that was the first item that came in through the legal review. Um, Chris, do you have anything else on that? No, I think you captured it very well. Okay, great. Um, oh, and then um, up here was the next item. The minimum acreage for the backcountry zone district is 160 acres. And she specified that's establishing um, a backcountry zone district because adjacency, um, I think Sarah, you just mentioned that a few minutes ago, adjacency to backcountry zoning um, would create eligibility for a rezone as one of our questions that we're going to put information into the fire. So she added clarity right there. Um, then uh, distinguishing and probably a, a, a distinguishing item that probably needs to be in our code already. Under our table of uses, we have solar energy systems, large and small, but we don't specify in that use whether they're residential or commercial. And so it brought up a, the idea as someone's reading through the standards that we're encouraging um, uh, solar use but in one area of our code that requires a conditional use permit. So adding the distinction between residential and commercial use was another item that probably will clean up our code, not only for um, this particular code amendment, but also for the existing use. So right there, we are adding commercial to solar systems. So that is referencing solar systems that sell offsite. Um, energy and not um, ones that are used for residential use. Um, and the do residential solar system uses require a conditional use permit? No, they do not. No. In fact, they have a streamlined um, through uh, legislation, they have a streamlined permitting process to incentivize uh, solar use in residential use. So they do not only down here where the installation of a small scale renewable energy system is encouraged. Um, that's consistent again with that residential use and that streamlined permitting sit, um, process for residential use. Only okay. large commercial offsite um, sale is the only thing that we use that we require conditional use permit for. Okay, I, I just like, I'm not sure Maybe I wasn't fine. I'm not sure that's totally clear, but good to know that that is the, what we're going for, I think. <laughs> so these, as we were I kind of scrolled through these fast, up here, we're looking at what's going to be a use by right in the zone district and what's going to be conditional. So these are actually existing um, uses that exist in our table today. So these are the solar energy, large and small scale for offsite sale are existing. So now we're just gonna add some clarity in there that they're commercial to the use um, throughout the county everywhere. And as we go down here into um, the standards associated with um, the district and promoting the use of renewable energy systems, um, we just wanted to make sure that there wasn't an assumption that that meant that those are one of those uses that need a conditional use permit. Does that add a, a little bit of clarity? Um, so I guess if you could scroll back up. Yep, yep, no please. worries. So the conditional uses Like none of, almost none of those would be encouraged or permissible with the backcountry licensing, right? No, all of these are, are things that we said would, you would have to get a conditional use permit to do any of the items that we have on here. Because currently in a lot of these areas, like we have, um, 
uh, like group camps and vacation lodges like the hut systems. Um, and we've got other than 10th Mountain, we have some other um, property owners that have gone through the conditional use permit process to have uh, group camps and vacation lodges. We kind of vetted this through as we were looking at uses um, back um, probably about a year ago, I think now, as we looked at what should be allowable as used by right and what if could be considered in the area, but only under a conditional use permit. I guess I'm, I'm not sure what question to ask, but I'm, I don't know. I think, um, and, and largely um, as going, we went through what was already existing in the RC zone district and the Ag Forestry zone district. Those are the two main affected with this rezone. And we went through and we looked at what is currently conditionally allowed um, in both, and then went through with the thought of um, not looking to necessarily prohibit uh, things that were already conditionally allowed in these areas. Um, but making sure that there were rails on them um, through the use specific standards. So we kind of dived out into each of those use specific standards to make sure that it was appropriate for the new zoning. So we can, the other um, areas, Sarah, did you have any other questions on that? Um. No, I just, I, I guess I, you know, without allowing a short-term rental or the overarching idea is to have the low impact and not have a commercial commercial use unless it is that conditional use permit for, I'm thinking mostly the huts or something, but um, I, I, I have to think on or look, think about that. Sorry. No, no worries, no worries. Um, the, the, uh, the highlighted area here in yellow was a revision or a redraft um, wordsmithing of areas that we had concerns from the last meeting that we had um, before this went into legal review. And so one was about noise pollution and the use of generators. And so this is a new wordsmith um, smith, uh, version of the noise pollution um, that we, you know, we had a lot of discussion around. So just now that the excessive noise pollution is prohibited, um, and that would be from generators or any un other unspecified use, generators for other than temporary use are prohibited. A generator while present on site shall be placed in a four-sided properly ventilated enclosure to minimize noise impacts and any noise associated with generator use or other unspecified uses shall not exceed 70 decibels. Um, that was a revision to what we previously had um, around trying to address generator use as well as, as noise mitigation. So that's just highlighted there in yellow. Um, any questions on that before I move on? Okay. Um, you'll see some other just grammatical uh, corrections as we scan through the document that Chris was able to give us, um, which leads us to the next comment right here under submittal requirements. So these are um, the submittal requirements when you go through the permitting process now. So let me back up just one second to that. Um, we, we have um, gone back to referring to them as permits, although not building permits, backcountry structure permits, permits that are reviewed through zoning and not through building. Um, and the reason for that is that by statute, the only things that we are able to license are marijuana and short-term rentals. So um, we will be throughout the code referring to them as permits and not licenses, but not subject to building code, but subject to zoning code. Um, so same kind of references as, as building, but under a different set of uh, uh, code requirements. And these are those requirements. And so Chris highlighted um, 
you know, kind of the question that we get all of the time, are existing structures intended to be grandfathered as non-conforming uses? So chapter seven of the land development code goes into non-conforming uses. So when an existing use becomes no longer compliant, potentially, then they become what is called as a non-conformity. And non-conformities by definition in the code can remain in perpetuity as long as they don't increase in size or intent um, or degree of use or intent. And so things that are existing within the code right now, um, or excuse me, uh, structures that are existing in these areas right now will become non-conformities. And they can, if they are, only if they're compliant today, they remain compliant as a non-conformity. If they ever want to come in and apply for a permit, permit because they'd like to modify something, then they come up to today's code standard. Um, a, a good point that Paul made um, as we were in discussion on this is that we currently have some structures in, within these regions um, that are currently not compliant. That won't change. They will remain non-compliant when the code changes unless they become um, aligned with the current code. That could bring them into compliance. If that doesn't happen, non-conformities, this gets a little um, confusing, non-conformities don't um, mean that you get a pass if you were non-compliant before the code changed. So if you had a build in the back country that did not have a building permit was, um, but was functioning as a dwelling unit, did not have a building permit, and didn't meet the criteria for a building permit, when we change the code over, those are still non-compliant structures. They still have to come in and do everything a dwelling unit would have to do in order to be compliant. And I know this is a little bit um, confusing, so happy to answer any questions on it or just kind of hear if that makes sense. You see a thumbs up from Heather. Paul, do you have anything to add to that? Hey, um, it, I think that Chris is recommending that we put, uh, put in a reference to chapter seven, which is nonconformities. And I think that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, that was the next part that I was just gonna, I had backtracked just a little bit to talk about um, our further discussion in this section. But yes, we will reference just like we uh, tend to do in code, um, existing subject to section uh, chapter seven right here so that it gives, um, we've tried to make this a very user-friendly code. And so I think that's a great step in making it um, meet that goal. And so if we reference section seven here, if someone has an existing structure, they can go right to that section of the code and find out exactly uh, what that means for them. Um, the next area, again, these are just changing licensing to permit. Um, adding throughout uh, these ones that are not stopping on, they are just grammatical corrections or adding clarity to sentences that were a little awkward. Um, the next part in here is the lapse of approval. So just to, um, uh, Chris asked if this should be um, lapse of approvals would happen within uh, six months from the time we issue a permit. And uh, we piggyback this on to the way that we do building permits given our short season. Right now we are issuing permits um, that may not have, um, may not be done in six months and may not have, um, uh, so we can't really do it from the date of issuance. We do it from the date of inspection because we have to account for our short building season. So instead of having um, those laps based on the issue date, we do it based on six months from the last inspection. And we just keep that consistent with um, building permits. And so that's the basis of that. This also brought up a really good, robust discussion on what to call them. Um, we went from license to registration, back to permit um, at the advisement of Chris, uh, which made good sense that uh, permit sounds much 
uh, a better use of terms for something that's being built versus a registration. So that is where we landed and we've changed all references from license to permit. Um, and every, yeah, I, oh, go ahead. I, I think the concern of staff regarding this matter is that we don't want to confuse a building permit with a backcountry zoning permit. And I think that that can get easily confused uh, because a backcountry zoning permit is considerably less onerous than is a building permit. Let's just call it BCP. Sounds good. I like that. <laughs> so we, we, we may work on that just a, a bit. I think that, you know, there is a, a concern that maybe uh, creates a certain expectation that a permit is a permit. And so maybe a little bit of a distinction between them. And like you said, uh, Bryce, maybe that's that's a good enough distinction, but we will we'll make sure everybody gets the final outcome of that and make sure that everyone's okay with it. I think that, um, I'm sorry, Ann, to step all over you about this. Um, I think that this is a zone district that is going to have two kinds of construction permits associated with it. And um, unlike any other zone district that we have, one of them is a backcountry structure and the other one is a dwelling unit. Um, and I, I am really pretty concerned about any confusion that that might create. I think that's a point well taken, Paul. And so I do think that um, we as staff can work on ways to make sure that we have um, added clarity to that and reduce confusion by the public on um, thinking the two are interchangeable. So um, I think that we can probably work on that, you and I and, and Chris. And uh, if we make a, a slight revision to the term of what we're gonna to refer to this as, we'll make sure that everyone's aware of it before we have this um, ready for publication. Just, does that sound reasonable? Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and just kind of, Paul, are you okay with that? Oh yes. I. I... I'm sorry. I shook okay. my head yes, but apparently that wasn't enough. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't, I couldn't see that. Um, next are um, either the permit um, application or the BCP application. Um, and again, uh, uh, Chris gave us some good uh, revisions here. You know, we specify at number three what a backcountry structure is, um, but she encouraged us also to make sure the distinction that we've included what dwelling units are. Um, within these uh, terms, just for reference and just to, to stay consistent. Um, so we've added that in there. Um, this is another highlighted area that we had lots of discussion on um, from our last session. And so we landed on no petroleum fuel fired equipment except for removable cooking appliances, having portable tanks and portable generators shall be allowed. So even if they are um, left from visit to visit, they're still not hard. Um, they don't have a gas line running to them, um, a permanent gas line. They only have um, temporary uh, removable tanks. Um, so that has been changed to uh, in, in an effort to add some clarity from our previous discussion. Um, and then I think everything else that we have in here, we're just changing from license to permit. So that concludes our legal review. Does anyone have any questions or comments on, on that? And if, if not, um, I was going to go into the flyer for comment. Does that sound like a good next step, Howard? That sounds like a very good next step. Okay, great. 
Great, great. Um, so again, let me pull up the flyer and just having to do this. Um, oh, here we go. And staff has reviewed the flyer and, and I think that we find it um, well done. Let me see if I can make it. I'm gonna have a hard time making this the right size. Okay. okay, so here is um, the flyer. And um, does anybody immediately have any, any feedback on any item of it um, that they'd like to share? Or we can just kind of do it quickly by segment. I think it's short and sweet and to the point and uh, does a good job of explaining what it is we're trying to do. I think so too. Um, you know, this, so this this top part just gives a nice introduction. Um, so I think it does. I think it does a really good job of getting right to it. Like you said, um, I like the will and will not um, to, and we'll plug in the public meeting date now, which is January 10th, is the date that we're working towards for the public hearing, with a town hall in December, um, December 13th. Um, to go through everything. I, I would particularly like preserving like counties up and lands and minimizing impacts to the natural environment. And then here are the same questions that um, John added to the website, as well as he's added some more and, and we'll get those draft answers out to everyone. So we can all feel good about those or, or see if there's any kind of tweaks to them that need to be done. Um, more information, we'll add the department's number and then we're hoping though to drive most of the traffic to the website. Um, so those are, if everybody's good with the flyer, um, we will get this out to uh, the mail assisting company uh, to start their work on it sooner than later. So um, once we just ask Heather uh, to plug in our dates now, um, I think the flyer looks pretty good. Does anyone have any comments or direction for staff to go ahead and move forward? Uh, move down just a little bit. Yes, absolutely. I'm sorry. I know I went through that really oh, fast. Right there. Hold it there. Yes. You know, I, I'm really glad we've got this very last paragraph highlighted, highlighted because that tells the whole story. That's what it's all about preserving the very essence of what we all love about Lake County. Very good, very good. This is a piece that Heather and Aaron put together. So definitely deferring to their expertise here. Thank you, Heather and Aaron. So I might, um, uh, I, I think that earlier in the meeting, some concern was raised about whether a person could excuse themselves from being um, uh, included in this backcountry zone district. And uh, the, the legal descriptions of the zone, and I, I think I've got a little bit of an answer, but what would happen is that I think that these zone dis districts are based upon the public land survey system, which is section, township, and range. Um, and I think we went down as low as the, uh, the, the nearest quarter section. So if somebody wanted to um, delete themselves from, uh, from this, it would have to be adjacent to um, a, another zone district so that we could put them back into it. Um, but it would have to reduce the size of the particular backcountry zone district here to the to a quarter sec, quarter section less. I'm not explaining that very well. I can I can tell because I don't understand what I just said. Um, that if somebody so if somebody has a quarter section, um, 
there are mining claims contained in that quarter section, and there's another one that's in that same quarter section, they'd have to go and convince that other owner that we both should come out of this backcountry zone district. And it can't happen if it's in the center of one of these backcountry zones. Is that part of how this process works that we're that people are allowed to opt out or is that well there's you, people are people are allowed to opt in and out opt out of anything as long as the code allows it. And since a backcountry zone district has to contain at least 160 acres, um, it might get reduced by how many acres are in a quarter set? 40 acres. 40 acres in a quarter section. So, and, and it would have to be on the boundary. So it couldn't be in the middle of one of these backcountry zone districts because that would be a spot zone. Well, and I, I think that we're hoping the intent is that um, the outcome of this, of course, anybody can, anyone can petition for a rezone is that we're adding a lot of value to these areas for property owners um, that, that may not exist. Um, so you will, will, you know, we'll, we'll have to kind of see what the public response is, but that's a really good point of um, if you're within these regions, um, then the participation is, is um, present in the rezone application approval, um, regardless uh, without the ability to have adjacency. Um, but if you are one of the property owners on the periphery that would have adjacency to um, other zones, then um, they would go through the same rezoning process um, for consideration as any anyone seeking rezone. Um, no, thank right, you. That, that clears it up. I wanted to know if they would be they, if that was part of the process them exempting out of that or that would just be they would go through the application after this was approved so i, I think, think it can be considered as part of the process and how clear is that to everybody that might be involved um during this initial uh, uh, uh building of the backcountry zone um uh, we've, we've, we've got to get that word out so people are going to know that because, like you said, once you get into that 160 acres, you're going to develop your own, you know, your own values and the assessor is going to raise everybody to that value that might and somebody might be in the uh, uh, right in the uh, or in the middle and you don't it's not suitable for a backcountry zoning or uh, for you're suitable for a cabin or whatever and he'd like to get out but he can't but we got to make it very clear i i don't disagree with that at all howard um and i think that uh one of the questions that we haven't um one of the facts that we haven't addressed yet is just exactly that can I opt out of this? And I think it needs to be fairly clear that um, it might not, particularly yeah. if, it, if it's in the center. Go ahead, Heather. I guess I didn't think that we were pushing this forward with the idea that we were going to talk to people about opting out. I mean, I think people can raise their concerns at either of the public hearings and you know, obviously, if there's somebody with a substantial enough claim that could, you know, topple over this rezone application, then something would be considered. But to, to try to say that we're going to go through this process and then every person that's like, well, I'm just not sure about it yet. So I want to opt out for now. Like that would derail this whole that could derail this whole thing. So I disagree, I guess, with the fact that they can opt out as part of this process. I would say that the idea is that we're moving this process forward. And if after the process is complete, somebody wants to rezone out of it, they would go through the rezone process. Um, again, obviously, if there's this strong opposition from a property owner, they're going to bring that forward to 
planning commission and the county commissioners. And if it's something that's a strong enough opposition, then that can be amended. Um, and it how and it holds and it holds water as to why they shouldn't be in the zoning district. And we're like, oh yeah, that's a good reason. Um, then I think it could be considered at that point. But otherwise, I, I guess I don't want to be presenting this, Paul, as a, you can opt in or out during this process, because that I just don't even see how that would be possible to move this forward if we're, if we're presenting it in that manner. That's a good point, Heather. And I, I didn't consider that. So if everybody feels comfortable with moving it forward, you know, the, the, the way that we have it planned and hoping that we can address any major concerns during this process. I think that's what we're really trying to do, right? I think the, the biggest people who are going to want to opt out are just the people who don't understand it. So we just need to make sure that we all understand it intelligently enough to present it to them so that they can understand it. Um, I would be surprised if there was a whole lot more that fully understand what we're doing that would want to opt out. So as long as we do a good job of explaining why we're doing this, um, I feel like I feel like we will we will run into few parties of opposition. So Heather and Paul, just you for for clarification, I said we're just going to move this forward um, without giving the people the option. Is that correct? Um, not allowing them to say that they would opt out before the hearing or before hearing everything that we have to say that they have to go through and hear all this information before they have the option or if they wanna do a rezoning um, with their uh, property. Yeah, and I, and I hate to say that we are not allowing them because it sounds, sounds bad, but I think what we're doing, right, is the, this application is to say, hey, Lake County um, believes that these sections of, of the community need to be rezoned to this. So this is what we're pulling forward. And we want all of you property owners to understand why we're doing this with your property and understand you know, the, the pros and cons of it and be on board. And obviously some can object and some can not. And, it, and the outcome of that public hearing with the commissioners is gonna be whether or not there's enough reason after those public comments are made to continue moving forward with the plan, essentially. If they agree with the plan as we have it laid out here um, and there's enough um, public support and not too much public opposition, then it should pass, right? And then, and then those few people who have opposition, if they're like, no, I'm, I really didn't want my property zoned this, if they qualify, they could opt for the re for the rezone. If they can't, unfortunately, they can't. Um, and so that would be, you know, and that's why it makes a rezone process like this, where the county's rezoning everybody's land, a big deal and and hard to you know sometimes get through um, because you are making the decision for property owners um, to rezone their property. Um, but if we Again, I think if we if we do a really great job explaining it, um, I'm being optimistic, maybe, but I I feel like if we do a good job explaining it, I think we will we'll, we'll do okay. Well, I think um, just to piggyback on that too, Heather, and I think just to bring everybody maybe a little into focus is that the only thing you know the one um, area that we're adding more of a regulatory. Um, uh, maybe uh, change to the code is is limiting the size of single family homes. Um, you know, we're not taking away um, a the the use at all. We're um, and we're promoting a use that um, you know we've heard time and again that is more consistent with these these rural remote areas. So and something that currently uh, property owners can't utilize their property um, because the code doesn't allow it. So it's increasing the degree of of a um, conservation minded conservation minded use, um, and and the decrease the the decrease in use is just in the size of the single family homes um, in these areas. So there's, I think there's a lot of value being added um, to the area. And of course, that's that's for the public to decide. But I think just as we're talking about, you know, opting in and out, I think it's good to get back to kind of the fundamentals of, of um, you know, 
where, how this developed and why. So any, any other comment? Heather, do you, or do you have a good enough um, connection that you would like to take over? I'm happy to let, <laughs> to, to let you um, lead. Sure, sure, I don't mind. Um, so the section here with the uh, will and will not, these are the pieces that I really wanted to, I guess, get, uh, get really narrowed down. Um, and if we need to make this, space on the flyer bigger so that we have more of these. Um, I wanted these to be the big items of this isn't going to take away, um, you know, your use of your land. Um, it won't guarantee you access to your property. Um, some of the big ones that we want to make sure people know, um, there's some of it that I feel like I maybe want to reword so that like guarantee access to your property and some of that that I want to make sure that it's worded correctly to where um, it's clear, but it's, I don't know. I mean, I feel like guarantee access to your property um, will not guarantee access to your property could also make some people think that we're taking away access. Um, so I really want it to be more about not changing it. We're not changing that, um, whether that's getting you access or not, you know, those aren't that's so that one anyway um so if there's any in here that we want to we want to morph a little bit we can do that um there were other things that i wanted to make sure people knew um i don't know i i don't like i said i, I feel like i just look at this all the time so it's hard for me to decide what we what needs to be in here and what doesn't but the idea really was to answer a lot of questions right up front with this document. So, um, yeah, you know, I think rewording create single family detached square footage limit of 900. I think, you know, it could be added as something to limit impacts or, you know, I don't know, to help drive back that last sentence of the previous paragraph of why we're doing this. Um, so if anybody has any suggestions on there, I would love to hear them. I was just thinking to differentiate the single family detached from the backcountry structure. You could say like backcountry structure, a dwelling up to 600 foot, such as a cabin or yurt, just to give a couple examples. Um, but then the other thing is I'm trying, I agree like the will not guarantee access to your property sounds harsher than it is. Is there a way we can lessen that yeah, agreed. I mean, I almost feel like it needs to be more about. It will not allow you to create access or new access. Uh, Heather, um, the, re the reason you put the guarantee access to your property, I, th I'm, I believe the reason you put that in there was somebody had access to their property when they built it, but then for some reason or the other, the Forest Service had closed the road into it. Is that the reason it's in there? No, I think actually, quite honestly, I think Aaron put that in here um, because we were having people, uh, when talking about it, I think we were just having people, well, and the discussion even in this group came up a few times of like, um, well, so if I, if I can get up there, does that mean I for sure have year round access or I even have partial access, you know, and it's not, we're not changing that. So I think she put it in here for that reason, um, which is why I keep going back to, I mean, maybe it doesn't even need to say this about access. Well, if I, if I was going to uh, buy a piece of property and um, build a cabin on it, and I saw this will not guarantee access to your property, does that mean that I might get it built and the county may close it? 
somebody may close it and I won't be able to get up there anymore. Right. Yeah, I don't I don't like that one in here either. So I need to we need to figure out how to I yeah, actually like it in there because I, you're not we're we can't guarantee that anybody can create a road to their property. They might have to walk in. Yeah. And they have and they might have to, you know, the, the Forest Service, we don't have the authority to dictate that in some cases. So I I just put in the chat, I I think it's a good discussion point. I think it's something that we should highlight. Yeah, maybe it's more about this proposed zoning code won't change your access status to your property because it it won't change it from now, right? I mean, it's going to be it's and yeah, I don't know. We gotta we gotta you think know, about that. You know, on like, um, yeah. on um, really looking at it, yeah, it does sound harsh, but. You certainly don't want to, you know, tell the guy you can go ahead and build up there and everything's fine. And then, like I said earlier, the Forest Service all of a sudden finds a strip in there. Um, the county can oversee that and say, hey, uh, oh, yeah, we can fix that for you, but you can't. So maybe it isn't as harsh as it sounds. Right. I just think it's confusing uh and so some clarity like i don't i don't mind if that sentence is in the bullet point but i almost feel like the main portion of the bullet point needs to be more about that we're not changing it um, yeah i like that will not change current access to your property it almost flips it into a positive right well and, and i'm wondering if maybe that is a better um, talking point for the website and maybe taking it off of the flyer because um, I definitely think, um, you know, there's definite attributes that we would like to have about this discussion, but what about taking it from the flyer and adding um, more discussion to follow it um, on the website? I think that's a good idea. Yeah. I, I like that in all. Um, yeah, in, in we can reference the website on here. I, I do think, though, we can't guarantee access now. Yeah, that's true. So I don't know that I have an objection to that statement there guarantee access to your property it will not guarantee access to your property we can't do it now and we won't be able to do it after but i, I do think it's it's a it's a statement that needs more um information behind it because i think it can mean a lot of different <laughs> things to a lot of different people um so i i just think that adding it to the website um for clarity um, might might really be good and access is so site specific um, it, it, it over I mean, well it, it is definitely an issue on a lot of different parcels um, but I just think adding in some discussion to the statement would really be beneficial and won't send the wrong information I think that's a good idea so uh, prohibit property owners from using their land we will not prohibit property owners from using their land. Um, um, I'm just wondering if something else could be used in, in that place. Um, because it's both, it's going to both expand and decrease. Hey Max, you haven't, um, you haven't seen my um, the Under Armour face masks. I would never. I don't touch this. I lost my. Yeah, no, I, I didn't expect just one if you like seen it. Maybe at no. that point in the truck. Hey, Commissioner Fiedler, you're. Yeah. Can you mute? Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Um. And then also remove all previous use by right. Um. I'm not, okay? sure I, I'm not sure I understand that. 
So it, it so what they're saying is it's not going to. I kind of like those first two because it doesn't remove all of um, the pre. You know, as you're looking to rezone a property, I I that speaks to me. I think that those two, those first two, have kind of a calming. Um, factor to them of it's not removing all it, all the pre, all of the previous use by right. So um, I think that'll be the first question on people's minds is you're rezoning my property. What are you taking from me? And um, prohibit property, you know, you know, does that mean you're going to render it? I think those two speak to the very concept of a taking. And so I, I think that they have um, I, I kind of like them because I think that it immediately has kind of the intent behind that this isn't designed to be a, a governmental taking. Okay, I'm, I'm convinced. <laughs> that was easy. Never is usually, right? No. <laughs> so. I had somebody with a question about our sentence of promoting environmentally friendly construction and that uh, they were worried that meant there were going to be like requirements for energy type. Uh, I don't know. So that was another one that needed some clarification, I think. I can see that. Maybe promote off-grid, um, off-grid utility or something like that. How about offers environmentally friendly construction? Well, are we trying to say low impact on the on? The natural resource and on the environment rather than construction materials. I think that's maybe what. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point, Sarah. So maybe promote environmental friendly development and. and Heather, we couldn't hear you there. Promote low impact low environmental impact construction or um, conservation friendly construction low impact sounds good hey it's abby i think i had put that comment in i think i just meant like could we put an example like compostable yeah i like I like that idea. It might be, yeah, solar and compostable toilets. Did you get those changes, Heather? Heather, I don't think we that you came across well. So <clears throat> I I think Heather is continuing to have um, some technical difficulties. So I would propose that we go ahead and um, I think she's probably taking notes on those changes. Um, we can plug in, um, she could do a, a final draft and we'll provide that along with access to the website and those outstanding questions to make sure they're fully vetted and um, everyone uh, feels good about those. Um, and, and we'll just participate uh, via email that way. Um, I would propose that we move into the that we move into the calendar um, and just kind of uh, do a recap of, of what we're looking at the timeline. Does that sound okay? Or does anybody want to continue with edits to the flyer? Well, 
rolling is easier to understand. Who was that that was just speaking? I think it was Heather. But her, um, she's muted. I think we kind of heard you, Heather, if that was you. Okay, I'm just gonna... Um, Go ahead and, and prep up the calendar here, here real quick. Does, does anybody have any objection or would you like to have further discussion or for me to scroll on to any other part of the flyer? Sarah, you're muted. All right, you're gonna pull up the calendar for, uh, for the timeline on the hearing? Yeah, just the timeline on the hearing, the notice, the, um, the town hall, we schedule an extra uh, work session in preparation to just go through basically like the talking points that we came up with this evening of making sure that the intent and all of the questions and uh, the dynamics of the code introduction um, is consistent for everyone. Um, yeah. So we're just gonna kind of look at the, our timeline. I I, yeah, I'd like to look at that, but Kayla did put in a comment too, and Heather said something about not compost, uh, public health not liking composting toilets, and Kayla said to talk about environmental regs so that accompany this uh, and do those in tandem with backcountry, which I think is going to be really important for the success of this backcountry. I, I feel pretty strongly that we're going to have a nightmare of administrative and staff uh, permitting if we don't have a conversation with environmental health and the board of health on um, the expectation of like vault privies and composting toilets and um, not requiring um, wells and, and all those kinds of things because um, I have gotten feedback from a couple of folks who have been permitted in a backcountry setting and there's a lot of questions around like putting in a septic system that's apparently being required and so I think I think it, I think we should do have have some other conversations like with staff and maybe BOCC and BOH in tandem not necessarily planning commission sorry um, I think that would be great. I, I think because the, and maybe Paul knew better than I did. Um, I, I, so I think maybe members of the planning commission were kind of in the same of thinking that um, the variance was moving into a, an administrative process um, to kind of complement this. So maybe that those next steps that haven't quite occurred yet. Is, is that accurate, Sarah? Um, the request has come to the Board of Health, um, but I'm not quite sure, and I'm not currently on the Board of Health, but I'm not quite sure what the administ changing that administ to an administrative process, how that actually streamlines um, uses and expectations for the applicants. Maybe well, it eliminates the requirement for a hearing by the Board of Health. Right, but I don't know that it makes it more user friendly. You think that eliminating a, ha a hearing doesn't make it user friendly? Well, I, I do, but I think that there are some other things that we've got to work on internally, like um, the environmental regulations in general, um, before we delegate things to an um, administrative, administrative process. And so just so that I understand, um, currently um, you, in as much as there's certain alternative sanitation methods that are not consistent with Lake County 
regular regulation 43 because there's no gray water um, regulations. There are still systems that do support like the pit privy um, that do support uh, backcountry builds, right? So there's hopefully, and, and, and just correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I, I don't know, and Kayla, you probably know much better than I do, that there's a hope that the options for alternative um, sanitation methods will increase in, in maybe somewhat the near future. But currently um, there is, like we hadn't had, um, had Jackie come for a meeting and provide us um, all the applications that had been applied for, for pit privies and alternative methods, and they had all been approved. So is there something, if it's not administrative and it does still have a hearing process, just, just to make sure that um, I understand properly. So there is, there is something currently, but we're hoping that eventually the, the um, regulations, the sanitation regulations will increase in capacity to be able to accommodate to accommodate greater degrees of alternatives. Is that, am I right in, in my thought process? I'm sorry, and I couldn't hear all of what you were saying. Oh, okay. Um, I think I can do it. I can make it a little shorter. Um, yes. Currently, um, there may not be a, as big an array of alternative methods that are supported by our adopted regulations, but we're hoping that'll grow in time. But currently, um, like we had asked Jackie to come and give us examples of PIP privies that had been applied for and um, all the ones that she provided to us had been approved. So, so we're not creating like a disconnect. There is a uh, sanitary alternate method um, that can be applied for. It, right now it's a hearing process, but we are hopeful that um, there will be more alternatives available in the future. Is, is that correct? Yeah, I, I think, Anne, if I understand your question correctly and I understand kind of um, very limited, how those regulations work on the public health side. Um, I believe that the county has the ability to create their own regulations and we can in turn make that an easier process and have more, I guess, variety if you call it that. Or, and we could look at what we passed by a mandate in 2019 from the state and look at and revisit and make sure that what we, what the county may have put in place that's more stringent than the state, which is not required, um, is actually appropriate to support like today's activities, backcountry zoning being one of them. That, that, thank you, Sarah. That really um, helps me understand and, and hopefully maybe members of the planning commission. So it looks like eventually, or, or there is, um, uh, interest currently to, to revisit those regulations and continue to look for ways to support options for alternatives um, that we may not currently have. And it would be nice that if we are going to start build, permitting backcountry structures, if there are some sort of guidelines to go by. Because the thing about these pit to toilets now is that each one of them is a one off, each one of them is bespoke. I mean, they each have to be engineered from scratch. So, you know, literally $2,000 to have an outhouse engineered and in a multi-month process to go through the variance. So if there's any way that the public health regulations could be refined in such a way that they can, there's a, a minimum standard to be met for these backcountry structures, just so that there's guidance out there, it'd be really helpful. Thank you, Bryce. Yeah, I, I really appreciate, I'm sure we all really appreciate that input because um, that, you know, that's good to know. And I think that's a part that um, we don't not necessarily see, we don't, not in planning and, and not in building. So um, thank you for, for sharing that and hopefully we can, um, but it looks, it looks like there's a desire to get that moving in the right direction. Oh, sorry. Um, 
Should we move on to calendar? Um, so it, Sarah, what I, what I think I'm hearing from you is, is you wanna really make sure as we look at these uh, dates that we've carved out enough time in between to just fully uh, realize some of the answers that you'd like to have. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fair. And, and I think we should be able to know that in the next few weeks, but um, so hopefully we'll be able to set something up in tandem. Great. Um, okay. 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 Um, so here's what where we're at and what things are looking like. Um, so we had committed to. Um, so we're here on the eighth. And working this week to fine tune our, actually over the next two weeks, um, fine tuning our website message, our flyer message, um, and then having our published, our first published notice in the newspaper on the 25th and running it for three times. Um, actually, as I'm saying that, um, it would have to by next week we would have to have the public notice, which is simply just in the newspaper um, suggesting that the hearing is on January 10th. Um, and that we would have um, this week, we would nail down the flyer. And then with the website being online on the 25th and the notices going out on the 25th. So that'll give three full, or excuse me, um, two full weeks of notices being out, three publications in the newspaper, the resource on the website, hosting a town hall on um, the 13th of December. We added in an extra planning commission meeting um, on the 29th of November, just to ready in preparation for the notices to go out to the public and then for the hearing on the 10th and the board decision on the 17th. Um, and the newspaper has also, uh, we talked to them um, about running just a uh, notice in the newspaper for the town hall on the 13th. So that's what, um, the schedule looks like, and I would anticipate then by December 13th, uh, for five weeks from now, we would, you know, want to make sure that everyone feels clear on the intent of, of the new zone creation and that we have worked uh, to resolve any of kind of the outstanding items that we've talked about this evening. Um, does that still look like a reasonable schedule for everyone. Well, in absence of a response, I, I, I will say that I think that's reasonable. So from the first time that it goes in the newspaper, it'll be one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks to hearing. With the town hall meeting in, in the middle of it. Right, at, at, at the five week mark. And then three weeks later, um, and you know, we've got holidays in there too. So it's actually uh, ends up being um, on the fourth week after the town hall. Um, one other thing, uh, Sarah, that you had brought up, and Bryce, I think you just kind of indicated to, and um, staff would be happy to kind of work on, and um, it, it, as long as we have some capacity, hopefully, to do this, is a um, resource guide, um, kind of like a common practices resource guide for backcountry, navigating backcountry um, permitting. I think, Sarah, you had brought up, you know, just having resources available to the public to help them navigate 
um, what this means and that there are some good common practices that could be, could be resources within the office or on the website that will just help people navigate in this area. Did you wanna revisit that a little bit or just share any of your ideas about that? Sorry, I lost. I lost you. I'm so sorry. I did not hear everything that you said. Oh, can I'm you sorry. hear me? Yeah. No, that's okay. Um, I was just saying, and also kind of in the interim here, you had suggested a resource resource guide, um, maybe common practices kind of um, resource available maybe through the website, as well as materials in the office to help people navigate um, backcountry permitting. Um, so I, you know, love to kind of continue to partner on your ideas and then um, share those out and maybe look for ways to have resources available to the public um, because there are some, um, as you pointed out, some common practices and some best practices and some good resources um, that, that we know for the area that we could make sure are available to the public. I will, okay, yeah, and I think um, John's uh, FAQ provides a really good framework to kind of insert a lot of those places or example, you know, like here are the entities that you would permit with, or if you're thinking of solar, I don't know, here's, here's, I don't know, I'm not, I mean, there are tons of solar, you know, re, uh, manufacturers or anything out there. Um, but just to, I'm, I'm happy to work with you. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have to go belabor that. Uh. Awesome, thank you. Well, and, and Bryce, I know you've, you can have some experience um, with this currently. So, you know, maybe any resources you find and maybe sometimes it's just like the big picture of things of like, um, you know, articles on, on solar or um, pit privies or whatever it could be, or just uh, sustainability or livability um, in the backcountry or, you know, just whatever kind of resources and, and even if they're just links to um, informational kind of items that we could add onto that website to just kind of help shepherd people into the, this new use. Definitely happy to share some of that. I'll look into it. Any objections to the current um, schedule because um, staff will start activating some of these things um, if there's no objection. Thumbs up. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, thank you guys. I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Mr. Tritz. I think I'm done with any kind of staff presentation. All right, that's been a, a very good presentation. I think we got a lot done here tonight. Um, where are we at? We're down to, I, I guess we've lost Heather for sure, huh? Anyway, we're down to what? We're down to updates from the staff and the board? Yep, and I think Paul and I took care of those at the beginning of the meeting. Say that again, please. Oh, I think Paul and I took care of that at the beginning of the meeting. All right, then I, is there anything else anybody wants to bring up tonight? Commissioner Mudge, anything you'd like to bring up tonight? Um, just to remind people, tomorrow night uh, is the Rec Master Plan open house at the gym from 530 to 730. Right. Thank you. Anybody else? Is there a motion to close this meeting? I move to adjourn tonight's meeting. Are you going to second that, Luby? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Thanks for everybody joining. Looking forward to the day when we can all get together rather than use a Zoom. Thanks, Howard.
Yeah. Thanks, Paul and Anne. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. Everybody good night. be safe. Thank you.